This is the GPL Podcast from GopherPuckLive.com. This podcast is sponsored by Jerry Peters and First Class Mortgage. Our expertise, your peace of mind. Visit us at FirstClassMortgage.com. Now let's start the show with your hosts, Jupiter and Vigo. Good evening and welcome to the GPL podcast, episode number 204. Well, Vigs, how you doing? We're back from break. I'm surviving. My, <laughs> my family went through a very difficult December as COVID hit our household and uh, made its way through all mild symptoms for everybody. One, one uh, child in my family never tested positive. But uh, the boogeyman is out there. Uh, we missed hockey for a month. We missed uh, school for a month. And uh, I, I got a lot of distance learning experience that I, I hope I'm past. That you didn't want to do uh, again. Didn't want to do again. And it just seems like it's affecting the college hockey world right now. And uh, it's frustrating. I, I got my Sling TV subscription all ready for the World Junior, my favorite tournament of the year. Oops. <laughs> and uh, no refunds, I guess, in that monthly pass. So, you know, I'm I'm surviving. Well, we'll get to that. But uh, before this break, Ed, we we did a little preview of uh, the big series at Michigan. Here we go. Split Michigan, a solid five-one win. Boy, do they look good Friday night, and then they took a big dump Saturday night. Vigs six to two loss, complete opposite. Jekyll and Hyde team keeps uh, hitting this team. Uh, they they can play 40 minutes. They play 50 minutes a weekend. And it's just not going to be good enough. And that kind of reared its head again against Michigan. Yeah, I think it was a case of Minnesota played really well in the first game. And Michigan didn't play very well. I thought Minnesota had rush chance after rush chance. You know, that's Sammy Walker's game. You know, when the game gets up and down and there aren't players in layers, that's how Minnesota wants to play hockey. And they just totally took advantage of it. I thought that was one of their best games of the year. I was like, oh, my gosh, maybe this maybe this team has flipped a switch. Like, going into the series, we were just like, <laughs> you know, sometimes you just need your high-end players to play another high-end team to raise their game mm -hmm. you know, after them seeing them dip a little bit. But then on, on Saturday, all of a sudden, whoa, Michigan's not giving up odd and rush chances. Oh, there's layers of the defense to go through. Oh, we're going to have to kill some penalties. Oh, we're losing draws. The other team's got more intensity. And we didn't get goal good goaltending either. So it was just like one of those situations where it was just like, it was just not a good hockey game from Minnesota when you knew Michigan was going to raise their level. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I see uh, in the in the YouTube stream chat, I see Corey Disappointing first half of the season. No way to spin it. And you know what? He's not wrong. This is basically a 500 team right now. Yeah, I think we were all expecting, at least on this show, Minnesota <laughs> to be in contention for a number one seed, to be a leader in the Big Ten Conference standings, and really separate themselves. And they had chances to do that in the first half. You know, I thought they, they played pretty well against St. Cloud. I thought they played pretty well against Minnesota Duluth. I thought they took it to North Dakota in the first game, and then just like the Michigan game, gave it away the second night. by Very North. similar series. In Very that, similar. That way. Yeah. And so when you do that, it's tough to, to get sweeps. It's tough to play consistent. It's tough to get momentum. And uh, now we've had this long break, and – and uh, we'll see what happens. But this team is almost like they're trying to skip to the end. And when they win like they have on those Friday games, they don't bring the same game plan to Saturday to, to match the rising intensity of their opponent, you're going to lose games. Psst. You can't skip to the end, Vegas. You can't. Now with the pairwise, because now what pairwise starts to mean something now. We've all kind of got past that first half of the season. And they're sitting around number 11 right now, which is not where we thought they would be or where they should be considering who they brought back this season. Well, 
it is where they should be, I guess, because that's that's what, well, that's what they've done. Well, but I think they shouldn't be though. They should be well, was what, well. Kind of what Corey is saying it was disappointing. They should be playing better. They should play more consistently. Um, it should be more than just a couple of games above five hundred, which is basically you know those first two games of the season against Mercyhurst when it all matches out. So, um, you know, at the beginning of the season, I remember you saying if we we're worried about pairwise. At the end of the year, it's not the season they anticipated. Right. And I think one of the surprising things from the first half are how well Nyes and Hugelin have played. Mm-hmm. I think Nyes has been a real bright spot for this team. If you're looking at players who are consistent, Nyes has been pretty darn consistent night to night the entire season. It's hard to look at him and, and look at his nights and say, eh, he wasn't there tonight. He wasn't engaged. You can say that about a lot of players in the lineup but not Matthew Nyes. Yep. And he, that might be a reason why he might be busy in February. Oh, we'll get to that a little bit later. <laughs> um, hey, you mentioned Hugelin. Um, was, was it today you were commenting on uh, – He's maybe Moscow was saying that he's had a good first half, done a lot of good things. He just needs to show up on the score sheet a bit more. Yeah, and he thinks that'll come. I think Hugelin's one of those players who's, who's totally responsible – you know, he's gonna. He's kind of got like that Miko Koivu kind of mindset. He's like, I'm not gonna cheat the defensive zone. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna cheat in the offensive zone. I'm just gonna be difficult to play against. I think that's where Huglin's at right now. I think we'll see him be more productive point wise in college at some point when he figures out when he can take chances in the offensive zone and when he can get involved in the rush a little bit more. But he's just a conservative player who you know grew up north playing honest hockey and that's that's what he brings well uh teams went on the break they're only a couple points back from michigan and then there's a couple teams breathing right down their neck right now uh, we'll get into a little bit more of that about what could happen if covid starts to rear its ugly head which it's gonna um but it, it came into december and it's one of our favorite times of the year vegas it's the world juniors and as we all know <clears throat> After just a couple games, they're like, yeah, we're not going to do this. And and it sounds like they didn't have the greatest protocols there. I mean, was it talking about they had there was a wedding at the U.S. hotel with a wedding party? I mean, it's just something wasn't quite right going on up there. They basically planned the tournament, I believe, that the vaccine for all the players would solve any issues of people getting COVID and transmitting it to other players. And what we are finding out that the vaccine keeps you out of the hospital for the most part and keeps you pretty healthy, but Omicron is, Delta, is different. Is different. They're still going to spread. Yeah. It, it, Omicron is less severe. Um, maybe not as much for the, the unvaxxed, but it, well, overall it is less severe. And, but it's a lot more contagious and it does kind of, the, the, the vaccines don't work as well on preventing it as it would for some of those other ones, mm-hmm. but the vaccine does help give you a much less you know, severe case. Yep. I, I equate it to having car insurance when you're driving in a blizzard or wearing a bulletproof vest when you're in a shooting zone. So <laughs> it's better to have that than not, but when they changed the testing protocol to just trying to test everybody before getting to the tournament to starting to test players every day, they were going to find cases. And and the way that they decided to handle the tournament after trying to put it together and invest all the money and had selling tickets, it's hard to know how smart that was. And, you know, you talk to the players like Brock Faber, who got sent home and talked to the media today, you know, he's disappointed you know, he, yeah. he grew up, you know, playing in the development program and, and maturing his game there. And he knows a lot of people with USA hockey, and he was really looking forward to this tournament where he was going to shine. You know, he's a player who's probably one of the best defenders at his age. And he was going to be leaned on pretty heavily for team USA. I think Sanderson for North Dakota is maybe a little bit more of an offensive guy. I think Faber was going to get the tough matchups uh, from Nate Lehman out there and, you know, he, he doesn't get that chance. And we'll never know. It's, There's it's, always a chance that they're talking about playing the championship this summer. It's such a key event for draft analysis and history. 
it would be interesting to see if they could pull it off. Who knows what's going to happen with this pandemic? Who knows if the federations could pull it off? But well, I, I, I'd still watch. It, I, well, uh, yeah, we'd watch. Um, ideally, you know, it would interfere. It would not interfere with other leagues. Now you're not. I mean, you're not worried about you know losing players. You know, early, you know, late December, early January, you could play those tournaments and and whatnot for college hockey. So it wouldn't for college hockey. They would love it. Um, unless a kid were to get, you know, like an ACL or something like that. I but, think but NHL that's still the teams case would now. love it too. Because NHL teams yes. want their top players to get this kind of experience. It's pretty cool for their top prospects to be counted on in a tournament best on best. It's a great experience for those players. You know, some of the ones who are currently on NHL rosters would be able to play in the tournament if they did during the summer. Heck, even during the Winter Classic, I think um, one of the people on the panel suggested to Gary Bettman, he's like, can we do – hockey in the summer olympics <laughs> and gary was like no the winter olympics needs the ticket revenue from and, hockey and, but and you, you do have nice. the, you do have the nhl that's their break it really is you know you saw what happened you know when they you know changed the season because of covid a couple of years ago and they hardly had a break um but you know the only fear you have is like some of the, these young kids they're ending up their season okay at the most early april so maybe a may tournament it's, well, it's, it's still close enough to their season, so they're not like not playing hockey for two or three months. Yeah, something like that. I, I don't know. I would I would love to see it happen at the same time as the World Championships. What that is? That's a May tournament too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's because every once in a while you get uh, the NHLers will kind of jump on a team after they've been eliminated from the NHL playoffs. I'm telling you, IIHF, you you can just give me some free streaming access to that tournament, and you can use my idea. <laughs> Just have it be like a JV game ahead of the varsity. <laughs> and by JV, I mean the world championship at JV and the junior championship at the varsity. <laughs> well, it, w- it was a huge bummer. I mean, I haven't had the NHL network the last couple of years, so I've missed it. But, you know, you picked up a couple of streams here and there. And I, for me, those 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 couple of weeks are kind of similar to it's a regional weekend for me. Just solid hockey, great hockey, really exciting. Fans are into it. Um, it's just a lot of fun. And COVID's unpredictable right now, and they may need to change the policies because, you know, like I said, you got Kirk Cousins who just had COVID. He didn't get vaccinated. All of a sudden, he's back already. I mean, it's it's looking like Omicron is much less severe, at least as we're seeing things come around. You think they might need to change some of these protocols? I mean, we've already got a ton of cancellations. We almost had Ohio State and Wisconsin cancel this weekend. They ended up shifting it just one day. But we're, it's it's going to start affecting a lot of things now. Well, I think if they start testing more often, they're going to start to discover yeah. that there's a lot of smoke in the room. Because mm-hmm. right now, the, the players aren't being tested very frequently because they're vaccinated and they're not showing symptoms when they do get it. And then when they have to test, like they were doing at the World Juniors every day, all of a sudden you start seeing these cases that you didn't think were happening. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's kind of the sticky wicket for people to evaluate ethically and and figure out. It's a big question. I'm I'm not a doctor by any means. I'm not an epidemiologist. I'm not a public health person. But I just know that if they start testing daily Mm -hmm. like they did last year, we're going to see a lot of cases. And if they don't, maybe they're going to be able to get through the season. Mm-hmm. But maybe we're going to just prolong what's going on out there. Tim, but Tim, saying, know. are the Gophers boosted? I'm sure everybody's vaccinated. We don't know about boosting. I don't know if they'll release that kind of information. Yeah, I know that the university changed their policy today that they're going to start tracking who at the institution is boosted as mm-hmm. well, and it's going to be I know a requirement for staff to be boosted if you're going to be on campus. So I got to think that they're going to start applying that to students. I mean, if I was a a really smart hockey coach, I might've had all my players get boosted over winter break. You know, if you're just, if you're trying to take care of any possible thing that you can take care of, you know, rest is a weapon, you know, doing your best, getting boosted over break would probably be the best thing for you to get to the second half. Cause I, I know what Bob said is when this pandemic was first happening, you know, they got hit with it during the summer. You know, a lot mm-hmm. of players got 
COVID during the summer and we were recovered long before, before the, the vaccines. Season. Yep, yeah. long before the vaccine. So they weren't too worried back then. But now, you know, we just have this concern right now. I mean, we've got UMD's got COVID in their program. Uh, Wisconsin's got COVID in their program. Good friend of the podcast, Todd Molesky. He's got uh, COVID right now. Hopefully, he's his getting, household. Yeah, hopefully he's doing okay. So it's out there, and and I think the Big Ten is still trying to decide if they're going to go by point percentage, which would have uh, helped Bob Mosco win a bonus last year in the Gophers hang a banner. Mm-hmm. But they went with wins. Well, percentage. I mean, Molesky actually said if they do have to cancel games and go by that, they are going to go by point percentage. Not official yet. Well, I. I trust Todd. I trust. It, that's just it. He's Todd's the man. There's a reason why we have him on all the time. I think Todd is basically like when the Big Ten needs to announce something, they go through Todd. <laughs> when the NCHC needs to release something, they go through Schlossman. Yeah, and that's you the know, way. It, that's the way it should be. And I'm fine. I'm just fine with that. Um, you know, bef- you know, I wanted to kind of get to the exhibitions here real quick there, but Vigs, uh, another kind of controversy happened recently. Uh, Michigan canceled the game with Western Michigan. Bunch of scaredy cats. But they played their game against Michigan Tech. They still had a full squad. What were they thinking? No matter what, they're gonna, they're making themselves look really bad by not facing Michigan, Western Michigan, I should say. They are making the Big Ten look bad. True. Like, it's just a bad look for everybody. And when they put that roster out for the Michigan Tech game where it's a full lineup. And Schlossman ripped them? (laughs) Schlossman wasn't the only one who ripped them. Well, I know, but Schlossman's usually pretty conservative. But you could tell Brad was pretty upset about this. As, you know, as a lot of us were. We're like, what are you doing? Right. It just sends a really strange message to the rest of the hockey community, which is pretty tight knit. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like some of these sports where there's just hundreds and hundreds of coaches and all this stuff, you know, hockey's pretty tight knit. You know, they're all going to go to their retreat here in Naples at the end of the year. And you kind of wonder who's going to be sitting at the table with Mel Pearson. <laughs> is it going to be Bob just kind of sitting there and looking the other way? You know what? What's going to be going on there? Because I don't think Brad Berry is going to. You think the Don down. might get mad? You know, it'd be interesting to get Don's take on this. A lot of people are saying maybe we need to change the pairwise to not being straight math anymore. Because if you can just cancel a game for whatever reason you want, because maybe you're scared to play someone, maybe the committee should have free reign to make an adjustment. Well, well, there was a little bit of justice. Michigan Tech did tie them. A little really just, you know, we were, everyone was, everyone was, playing everyone playing. was rooting for Tech. You know, I, I'm not big on this. Oh, I love Tech and go traveling, all this other stuff. Houghton, we're, they're the, everyone's, you know, favorite team. I'm like, that's not me, but it was that Wednesday night. I'm like, go Tech. And uh, I was listening to the game and it was, it was, uh, they couldn't quite pull it off. They got a penalty shot in overtime and, and couldn't pull off. It would have been nice. Yeah, only 55% of a win, but now it's you know 50 right down the middle. Um, it, It's bad for hockey. It's bad for the Big Ten. I hope, uh, you know, you're not going to hear much from coaches. I don't, Motsko's not going to throw, you know, Mel under the bus, but maybe that's what needs to happen. But like you said, they'll wait till their little meetings in Florida and then they'll all throw them under the bus, not in public. You'd hope so. <laughs> but, you know, I think I think college coaches are upset. College Hockey News had an article where they talked to Cordell's coach, uh, Schaefer, and he was saying how it's just – it's not a good look and it's not fair. And no one is really getting Mel to talk about it other than saying that he was told they couldn't play. And I think for a lot of people that's not a good enough answer. And, and here's the thing, though. They had enough players. It's not like they were extremely short. They had enough players. Their roster showed they had enough players to play. Um, to cancel that late should be a forfeit. Well, what one nothing? It wasn't, it wasn't late. They canceled it ahead of time. Well, yeah, I, I mean, under, but I can understand like if they play the game against Michigan Tech and their their goalie gets hurt 
and maybe they only have one goalie who hasn't played all year. Yeah. He's the guy for the next game. Yeah, or, right. you know, they have four defensemen. You know, I can totally understand a situation like that. But when you have a full lineup headed into the Michigan Tech game and you make the decision you can't play the next night ahead of time, it's just baffling. And I it's it's kind of inexcusable to me. Yeah. I don't believe the answer I'm being given. Oh no, I, I don't think anybody does. I think I think Mel's just kind of saying, well, our medical staff says they shouldn't have played. It's kind of his little out. Has he ever been told that before? Has he ever gone to them before? You know, it's just a weird, weird situation. It's a capital B and a capital S. There's a lot of teams who play shorthanded around the world junior time. If you have a roster like Michigan has, you prepare for that. That's why they were able to field a full roster for that game Mm -hmm. against Michigan Tech. They have enough players to account for players going to the world juniors. I hope he has enough players to accommodate if three of them get picked for the Olympics. Or more. Or more, because your power is already going to Canada. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure Johnson's going. And you'd have to think Matt Benier's is going. It really well, actually well, makes the Big Ten rate <coughs> really interesting. We're actually going to get into that in a bit. I just wanted to quickly cover, you know, the, the Gophers did have a couple exhibition wins uh, earlier this week, Sunday and Monday, and played St. Uh, played St. Thomas at uh, Doug Wu Arena in St. Paul there. Crowded house. <laughs> Got down 11 seconds into the game, and <laughs> the party was on right then, on. Biggs. Yep. I mean, <laughs> I, I didn't go. I I wasn't really, you know, I wasn't feeling great. I'm like, I don't really want to go to a big crowded place where the mass and whatever. And, and uh, you know, they did come out on top. They, they kind of put things together in the end and, you know, beat them. Uh, followed by you know uh, Monday night they they played the U.S. national team which I did show up for that um, not many fans did uh, they should have because that's an excellent team boy they've got some great team speed and some puck handlers on it it was fun to watch they just kind of fell apart the second half of the game where uh, you know Minnesota just kind of shut them down and and obviously the Ben Meyer show was on he was all over the place causing trouble for that USA team. Uh, obviously, Ben Myers is not a big guy, and a lot of those U.S. guys are not big guys. But he's mature. He's got the strength on the skates, and he really kind of took advantage of the youth of Team USA uh, Monday Night Beings. Ben's a big player. Like he plays well, big. Yeah, yeah. He like, plays he's big. Not, yes. He's not he's thick. tall, he's but thick. he's thick, and he's got that good base to himself. Where when you put him in a game like that it's going to be hard to take the puck back from him and he's going to have his way when he goes to the corner with these U18 guys getting the puck back for himself. And that's just the kind of game where he's going to shine. He's a, he's an all compete player for the Gophers and you know, it's good to see him get going, you know, enjoy him while you can, you know, there's going to be a lot of suitors for him at the end of the season. You know, he plays a kind of a pro game, a possession game and, uh, He's he's a player they're going to have to lean on big in the second half. Yeah, if he's there, <laughs> we'll get more of that later. Steve's asking, "What do I think of the two thousand or so in attendance at versus Team USA?" I think it's a shame because anytime that this team plays Team USA, it's a fun game, up and down game. I don't know what the fans are thinking. Uh, it's. It's 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 like the for me it was always like you know the old Mich- the old uh, college hockey showcase when Michigan would come into town and and it was a holiday but you know what the people were still there because they wanted to see those games mm. I mean a couple times in the nineties we had like a couple Russian teams come in and th- we did some exhibition and some Europe teams that was fun hockey because it was just just flying up and down the ice so it, it's a little baffling to me that it was so short for this. As a U18 team, uh, Vs, they've done very well against other uh, NCAA competition, and it was a fun game. Yeah, I always like the U18 game because you're seeing a lot of first round picks. You know, the development program's done a very good job getting players ready for the draft. And this year, again, there's going to be a couple of them that are going to be drafted pretty highly, and they just seem to keep doing a better job. There's a bigger pool for USA Hockey to choose from for this program right now, and it's really a hummer. You know, I didn't get there because my kids were going back to school for the first time since November 30th, 
So we wanted to get that, you know, that good <laughs> night's sleep before on a school night. So it was a little tricky for us, but you know, I, I look forward to that and it looks like the Gophers are going to have some good players coming. You know, Stugger looks, looks really good for the popped in a goal. Program. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be a good player. He's really just gone up and up and up for them. You know, he, he looked good at the tournament with the team over in uh, Europe this, this fall. And uh, he, He's he surprised me. I didn't think he was going to be ready for college hockey next year, but it looks like he's getting there. Vonner in the in the YouTube chat. Uh, there were four scouts sitting next to him. I'm sure there were a lot more than four in the building. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a big one on the scouting calendar to see. You know, because you're projecting how these kids are going to look against the next level, and there's no better way to do that than against a high end team like Minnesota. Because while Minnesota hasn't played played a great season so far. Mm-hmm they move and skate very well, especially their defensemen. So okay. you're looking for how they match up against and, that. And a lot of people kept saying, you know, why isn't Boynton getting in there? Why isn't Boynton getting in there? It's, well, my opinion here, Viggs, is that, you know, Moscow's like, you know what? Laffer's our guy. Laffer's going to play every game. Just in case we need somebody who's got some games in that could play for us in case, you know, he gets injured or something like that. And that's why Close was played all six periods through the exhibitions. I mean, mm-hmm. does that make sense to you? Yeah, I think so. I know Boynton's battled through some issues mm-hmm. this fall. He hasn't been able to practice consistently. He hasn't been able to do the strength and conditioning consistently. And so I think Bob, you know, maybe is a little frustrated with that as well yeah. and saying, hey, if you want to be a part of this program, I need you to do everything. And if you're not, you're not going to get these kind of carrot type opportunities because closer is closer is doing all the work behind the scenes. And, you know, he had a nice weekend in, in goal. So, you know, I think Jack's going to play any game he can play. Yep. But if for some reason something comes up, you know, closer is their short term. Yeah. And that just makes sense. You know, you just, you don't want to put in any, you know, Hey, we just want, if it was a season where they're doing some rotation here and there and, it, and there wasn't the guy, I wouldn't have doubted we would have seen, you know, all three guys play a period. Right. But uh, Laffer didn't even dress this weekend, so that was pretty clear that, hey, close is our guy, and if close happens to go down sometime during the game, then Boynton gets his chance. But he wants to get somebody just in there, and that was his chance. So and that's exactly what he did. So for those of you in chat, you can send us more questions if you want. We're trying to keep an eye on that. Um Need to get into quite a few things here, Viggs. We've got the Olympics coming up. Oh, boy. And, of course, we're heading to Michigan State this weekend, we hope. Knock on wood. Uh, but first, we need to hear from our sponsor. Hey, fellow GPLers. Jerry Peters here from First Class Mortgage. Have you refinanced your home in the last 12 months? If you haven't, chances are you should. Record low interest rates and skyrocketing home values make this the perfect time to remove monthly PMI while improving your interest rate at the same time. You can also use the equity in your home to finance those home improvement projects. Or you can consolidate high interest rate credit cards into one new low monthly payment. To hear more, call or text me today at 612-940-3291. You can email me at jerry at firstclasscorp.com. Or you could go to firstclassmortgage.com to fill out a free online application. Mention the GPL podcast and receive a $300 closing cost credit. Some restrictions do apply. First Class Mortgage's NMLS number is 322842 minus 480200. This is not an agreement to lock into an interest rate under Minnesota law. First Class Mortgage is an equal housing lender. Thank you, Jerry, for continuing to sponsor the GPL podcast. Um, while we were away on break, Viggs, uh, NHL said, you know what? COVID's not looking good. We're, we're backing out of the Olympics. Uh-oh. What's that going to mean for college hockey? Is What's going to mean for any, all hockey? And from what we're hearing, it sounds like it's going to be, at least for Team USA, it's going to be kind of heavy on some of the college players. You know, the speculation right now, it's, you know, for Minnesota, they may take Faber, Johnson, Myers, and even recently I've heard, even though he's young, maybe even Mr. Nice. <clears throat> I would say great opportunity for them. They cannot say no if this comes up. Um, but the biggest fear we kind of had at the beginning of the season was 
is that they had eight defensemen. You lose two of them, you're down to six. You have no room after that. You're pulling a forward back to play major minutes, not just kind of fill in here and there. Uh, Let's hear your thoughts. I personally would hope USA Hockey would recognize that the damage it would do to a team to take two of their top three or four defensemen from the Mm -hmm. roster. I think it's easier if Minnesota's losing forwards to a team like that because forwards, I think, are a little bit easier to plug and play. But when you're taking top defensemen, like if they took Faber and Johnson, you know, you're having to replace 50 to 60 minutes of, of ice time somehow, which is very challenging for any program. So we'll see what they do. I don't know if Johnson's played a great first half. Mm-hmm. Anyway, you know, he is a first round pick for, for Buffalo and he's, he's thought of very well and he skates very well. I don't think his first half is as good as Faber's. So if I was weighing the two, I would tell you to say hockey, just take one, take Faber, <laughs> <clears throat> but you never know that would, that would help. And I, and I would think in a tournament like this, you know, you're going to want a couple skilled younger defensemen, but there, there might be better options out there for them too, to, to fill a roster. And quite honestly, Viggs, we may have seen a preview of this, this past exhibition game against the U18 team. Um, Myers and Nyes were extra skaters in the game. What? <laughs> <laughs> Nyes went out. He ended up being sick. They said everything's yeah. fine with him. Uh, uh, was it? Was it? Fa- Faber Kester? I can't remember. Faber Kester also took a big check. I think it was Kester. Took it, a, it was Kester. Yes. I, sorry. I just couldn't. So remember. they're just being cautious with him. Yes. They, they took Obviously, they took him out here. of that game. No. Um, uh, but like when I saw Myers and Nyes both on as extra skaters, I'm like, oh, wait a second. And you're thinking maybe, you know, they're trying to get, you know, a couple centers, you know, figured out. And, and you're like, you're, you were telling me, you text me, let me know who's playing center and let me know who's doing this. And mm-hmm. you now they're switching Huglin and, and Myers a bit, you know, um, Myers was a monster. I think it was kind of his audition for team USA against the, the U18 team. Cause like he was just everywhere. Uh, Moscow sees something coming. He's trying to get some guys out there. Like, like Colin Schmidt was out, you know, playing a lot more than he would have before. He, he's trying to get guys in there cause he knows something's going to happen. It just doesn't yeah. know what. Yeah, I mean, he's been trying to get fish in the lineup more and more. You know, I like that. I like that, actually. Yeah, he adds a little something to that blue line. Um, and and we'll see what happens. You know, Denman got in the lineup. He got a goal this weekend. So, so who knows what's going to happen there. But Bob obviously knows what's happening because I asked him kind of after the official availability wrapped up, Hey, what's going on here? Canada's kind of given out a long list of players. And he's like, USA hockey is not releasing a long list. It's a short list. Mm -hmm. And the players who go are going to go about the January 31st to camp in Los Angeles. And then they're going to go over. I think the tournament starts on February 10th or 11th or something like that. February 9th for a couple of but for the U S team, their first game would be the 10th. Yeah. And so they'd start on the 10th and, and hopefully be back at the end of the month. So if they don't get COVID over there, if they get COVID over there, you know, it sounds like the quarantine periods could be lengthy in China. Three, three to five weeks. Yeah. Could be three weeks. Um, let me see here. Puck Hound, Dryden McKay, get the nod for the Olympics. He's an older goalie. He's not drafted. He's a hell of a goalie. Born in Illinois. That could really devastate uh, Minnesota State's, you know, end of their season. They might get him back for the playoffs, but uh, he well, would be well, a would good it, choice. <laughs> but would it? I mean, some nights he faces like ten shots. True, you know, he gets some of the easiest shutouts. True, but hockey. you know, I believe I believe when they went up to Northern Michigan a couple weeks ago and some COVID, some other stuff like that, they they gave up five goals because you know some of that too, Vigs. We've seen it. It's in kids' heads. I know I've got. I'm going to play hard for this guy, but this oh, this other guy's back there. I'm a little more nervous. We've and seen the, it. And a the other, th- we've seen it a thousand times. And shooters too. Shooters know when they're going. Oh gosh, yes. McKay. That 
okay, I've got to make a, the best cross ice pass here to get McKay moving, or mm-hmm. you know, we got to do something to get him out of position. Overthink it. Overthink it. Rather just throw pucks on pads and try to get rebounds. You know, goalies can have that kind of mind trick on people. I think it would be a great selection. I, I don't know what the what the order is. I mean, we kind of figured a couple. We kind of know that the the skaters that are going up, but goalies, we just don't have a clue. But yeah, it's really hard. I think to evaluate goalies as you up levels, but you know, I think he would be a clear choice because a lot of people in Minnesota State think he should win the Richter and maybe the Hobie. So why wouldn't he play for the Olympic team, right? And don't at us, people. The Richter was voted on after the tournaments last year, the the league tournaments, right. Um, when he gave up five in a game, didn't make it to the championship game, whereas Laffer won the tournament. It surprised me as well because I thought the overall season McKay was better. Um, if they would have waited a week and did it after the regional, yeah, McKay probably would have won it, Viggs, but uh, don't add us, huh? Don't complain to us. It wasn't us. It was just the timing of the vote. That's all. Mm-hmm. I know a couple people who would not be happy if McKay left. Really? But could... <laughs> they wouldn't do it for their country? You know how some people are. I do. I do. <laughs> I think I think there will be some Gopher fans who will be upset at players leaving from Minnesota. But, you know, Minnesota has been very proud to have Olympians represent them in the past. Oh, yes. You know, heck, even, you know, in the 80s when Team USA would take a team for the entire year, mm-hmm. it's like it was like losing him to the NHL because he'd be gone so soon. So. You know, I don't think Bob, especially being a good soldier for USA Hockey, is going to stand in the way of of them picking any players. And he'll, well, it he said could, he'll be cheering them on. It could make for an interest, interesting, uh, you know, league playoffs and NCAA tournament. All of a sudden, you start getting these basically college superstars back on their teams. Mm-hmm. I mean, because. Obviously, if Minnesota loses a couple defensemen or whatever it may turn out to be, Michigan loses, it changes the balance of power in the Big Ten, big time. Yes, and that's what I was getting at earlier with Michigan. Yes. Michigan loses all those players. Minnesota loses some players. The Big Ten gets really tight. Correct. Because I just, I don't It already is tight. It's going to get even tighter. Yeah. Because I don't see Michigan State losing players. I don't see Ohio State losing players. Mm -hmm. I don't. Maybe Penn State, I'm not sure. I haven't looked at their roster super carefully, but they probably won't lose any players. And then at the bottom league, you know, you have Wisconsin, you know, so they're going to be down there anyway. But you look at a team like Michigan State, who the Gophers are going to be playing, they got swept by Michigan. They slept, They swept Wisconsin. They split with everybody else. All of a sudden, if teams like Michigan and Minnesota lose some of their top-end players – it's a lot easier for them to target splits against those teams and it brings mm-hmm. them right back in the conference race. Mm-hmm. And heck, parity in the pairwise is going to be crazy this year if this happens. <laughs> right? I mean, North Dakota, I mean, I mean, especially Anderson, you, you, think, you think about somebody like, like a Minnesota State. They got McKay up there. Their team is doing just awesome. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, recently, the Luce had some COVID problems. They've lost like five or six in a row. That's hurt them. Duluth, I mean, um, excuse me, at Minnesota State's been winning. All it takes is McKay to be gone for the month of February, and if they lose a couple bad games, and, it, and the it, thing it, with, it, could, it could hurt their seedings easily. Well, and the thing with Minnesota State too is because they play in the league that they do, losses in that league hurt them a lot more yes. than losses to teams Correct. that the Minnesota Michigan play. It's just that's kind of the fact. So we've often said it really gives lost. Western it gives Western a chance to take over. Yeah, it, it really it, does. We've often said a bad loss hurts you more than a good win. Yes, helps. and which is unfortunate. We we've all kind of thought that the the pairwise needs to be tweaked a bit because it, like you said, it doesn't reward you enough for a great win, and it penalizes you too lo- too much for a bad loss. Correct. Right. right. Klein says, when the roster is going to be announced? Oh. Bob seems to think that they'll be announced this weekend. So, will it be a try? Will they have a roster that's a little larger, and will cut some guys? Or do we know what that's? That's typically what they'll they'll do is they'll bring, bring like in like three or four extra okay. for the camp, 
because especially with COVID, if if a but they'll tests keep positive, those guys though. Well, will there probably, be will there be special roster rules for the Olympics? I don't think so. They'd probably cut guys before they travel to China. That's kind of how they've done it for the World Juniors. Is they'll bring a mm-hmm. team for a camp and make like three cuts. Because I think going to the World Junior camp this year, we thought Lucius was kind of a bubble player, mm-hmm. and after USA made their three cuts, he was still on the roster. Stay tuned, folks. Well, it was Moscow second, like the end of the weekend, like like Friday, Saturday. Oh, okay, yeah. So, all we know, folks, is it's going to be crazy. It's going to be fun. It's going to be crazy. It gives uh, some of those lesser players a chance to to step up, maybe Vigs. Um, I'll be honest here. I would still like to see uh, Mr. Walker step up a little more in his game. He is, uh, I'm not trying to bring him down, but I still see a lot of selfish play with him. Trying to control the puck coming into the zone, running into a guy, losing the puck, or sometimes getting around that guy, getting in too deep and losing the puck deep, not using his outlets. Um, I'm sure the coach tells him about this, but we, <laughs> we saw it against the USA team. Highly skilled. Picked him apart when he was trying to do that type of stuff because he couldn't get. He, yes, he's fast, but these those those kids are some of the fastest kids in the world too. So, I, I, I re, we really need for him to play smarter. Well, I think he just needs to be better with when he exposes the puck mm-hmm. because when he's coming through, every once in a while you can flip a puck through someone's legs or over the stick, but that is a risky play. You know, usually when you see Lucius and Myers and Nyes making their oh. puck skill plays around players, they're the strong puck, on the puck. They're strong and they're not oh, yes. exposing it. They are they are pulling it away. They are using their body to shield the puck. They're not putting it into the defender's triangle very often. They are they are making smarter plays with the puck. Sometimes they'll chip it and beat the guy on a race to the corner, things like that. Walker needs to stop doing his doggy and pony show. You know, that's what we used to call it when Grant Patoni would work with the players with all these crazy stick drills. Th- that's fun to do. It sometimes can look good, but you can't do that in risky situations. And he is yet to Team learn that. game. And I know that Bob needs artists to get where he wants mm-hmm. to go, but I, I think for the second half, that is a big key in figuring out Will he understand that? Because I thought last year during the second half, Walker started to show signs of progress with his decision-making. I I think he started to get it a little bit more. And then when they got in the Minnesota State game, that all went away. Uh, A question that I saw pop up, I don't know if it was on the board today. Um, The portal had a Lake State defenseman, a fairly good one, pop up. If we lose a defenseman, is that something they could pick up? Can they pick them up right in the middle of the season like this? I don't know the rules. That is a great question. All I know is that players transferring to the U, for whatever reason, would have to get there by the start of the classes, which is the 18th. Hmm, Well, we should know. And the thing is, if they want to be at the U, you can get things done really quick when you're a hockey player or athlete. I mean... You'd they, hope so. It's not like you and I just try to get our applications and everything together. They've got people who can make it happen. I, I can't remember the guy's name from Lake State. You know, a, a top two defenseman for them. Um, if they were to lose two defensemen, for me, that would seem like a no-brainer. Obviously, I don't know how that affects things when players come back <laughs> at the end of the season. Uh, but he'll have six defensemen. And like we said, we last year we had 10 defensemen. We had some flexibility if a player went down. And we will not have flexibility if a Faber and a Johnson leave. Right. So that'll be the big mystery, I, I would think. It's going to be a fun couple of weeks. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. But, I mean, they, they still get the players through the end of the month. So I think, you know, the Michigan-Minnesota matchup, is that is that just before? I think it's the 22nd. Before? So I think we'll still see that game, which will be... 21st and 22nd are yeah. the Michigan series, and then it's Notre, at Notre Dame 28th and 29th. All right. So, so 
circle that weekend because that will be key. Corey's one asking I'll... what what Corey's saying asking what do players do you think will be gone? What's your prediction? My prediction would be Faber, Myers, and Nice. I'm I'm prepared to be wrong. I could easily see them take, you know, Faber, Johnson, and Nyes or Myers. You know, I could easily see that. But I I think Minnesota is going to lose three players somehow. That's just how they figure out how to do it. It'd be much yeah. easier for Bob to replace forwards than than D. Correct. If we'll they see. could keep Johnson, like you said, he hasn't had a great year, but that would really help a lot. <laughs> yeah, I and I also think maybe as we were talking about driving McKay being picked. I gotta think USA Hockey realizes taking someone's number one goalie away is such a huge hit to a program that they might not do it. You know, Strauss Mann is an option for that team, and he's playing in the the Swedish pro. Not league. a bad, not a bad idea. Yeah, you know, I think there's another player, uh, Brandon Maxwell, who plays in the German league, who's American. You know, so they do have some options there. You know, I you look at Canada, they're looking at Devin Dubnik who isn't playing right now, I don't think. He's just practicing. you know. So I think that's kind of how teams might look at goalies. And the Russians are going to bring a lot of good players. <laughs> Heck, the Russians might still get some NHL guys. We've seen that before where Russia really has a soft spot. Well, on well number eight players. said he wants to – he's always been saying, I'll just leave and go play. Yep. <laughs> I don't know if he'll do it now, but he, he has said that in the past. But hopefully these guys are back for the tournament. We'll see what happens. But the Gophers yes. have a lot of work on their plate to get there. They oh, have not done that. themselves favors in the first half, putting them kind of on this bubble here at 10-11 in the pairwise. You know, usually that's pretty safe at this time of year. I don't like it. But you don't like it. And, and, and you can't like right now with – what the future is coming. You know, some of these top teams are going to drop, which you could push Minnesota down as well. Some other teams are probably going to maybe bump up a bit with all with players gone. It kind of gets us, gets us into this weekend VX, you know, um, heading to Michigan state. We hope knock on wood. Um, honestly, if they want to be serious, they need to get, you know, five or six points this weekend. I think five or we six can't points do this, would we go. We can't do this split stuff anymore. Well, Michigan swept Michigan State, so you're looking at that series as your as your bar. And Bob has always said that you don't start talking about sweeps until you win the first game. But <laughs> a sweep is the expectation, I think, for everybody this mm-hmm. weekend. And for them to get there, they're going to need to play some consistent hockey. And maybe that's a reason Bob isn't tinkering with the lineup like he maybe thought about doing headed into break. Um, I kind of would like to see some tinkering because I think you need to put your team in position to win at the end of the year. And if you're not going to experiment now, you're losing the opportunity to see what works. And I know you've, you liked it when he, for like a game or two, put Walker on the wing. I and loved you, it when he and, and you wanted him playing other guys at center. Yep. To take that responsibility, so Walker had more of that freedom. It was against North Dakota, and Walker looked the freest he's looked all season. He was able to use his speed up and down the ice. I think he's a more dangerous matchup for opposing teams to to play players against. I think other teams, when they see Walker on the wing, it's harder for them to forecheck his line because he can stretch the zone so quickly. It just it just changes the game when you put speed like that on the wings. Walker is not disciplined enough to play against good teams, I think, below the dots and still be effective on the score sheet. He just hasn't shown that. And, you know, after four years of seeing it against good teams, what's that definition there? You know, it's, it's misused. But I don't know if I'd go f- as far as saying it's insanity, but he is what it, he it's is. Ti- it's time to let him shine. Put him on the wing. Yes. Let him shine. He's That's where he belongs. Be, he's not gonna I don't, be I don't think he's going to. I don't. Yeah. He, uh, he might not even be in pro hockey. Yeah, we'll see. An AHL or maybe. I, I just. He's a college hockey player. 
Use him where it'll, it'll take advantage. You know, uh, put him up, you know, put Huglin on, on his line. Put, or Huglin, him, and whoever. Maybe yeah. Crookshank, because that's a lot of speed. That's, that's, I, I think that would be a good matchup for, you know, Huglin, Crookshank, and, but the, although you mentioned you'd like to see Crookshank more at center, though, too, didn't you? Yeah, I'd like to see Crookshank at center because he's a fast player who's disciplined. And he isn't putting points on the score sheet right now. So when you have a player like that, maybe just play to their strengths. You know, mm-hmm. give him a role where he can be successful in other ways. You know, Brodzinski talked about that today. He's like, you know, when you're not putting points on the score sheet, you need to find a way to make an impact to help other players. And you need to show up in another way every game. So if you're not going to be scoring points, what's your best role? Mm-hmm. And if you can score points, what's your you know maybe what's your best role? <laughs> so, I mean, I yeah. would be putting Walker at wing. I, I'm not. I'm obviously not the coach, <laughs> you know. And coaches probably don't want to be told how to do their lineups. But no, they don't. You know, you, if you need Walker to be successful, put him in a position to succeed. You know, I know you want to put him at center. He probably says he's comfortable playing center. It looks great in practice, but after three years of game film, he looks really good at wing too, (laughs) you know, and it presents a lot of problems for other teams, how they play you. Mr. Lewandowski. How is he still here? (laughs) Every year there's like, it's like, it's like the just settles of college hockey. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, five straight years, fifth year senior. Um, he's, he has been the thorn in Minnesota side off and on. He has been. And uh, let's just put him into the glass. Show him that we're going to be physical with him. That's all you got to do. Well, I remember saying, like, when they had the KHL line, I remember talking to someone about two different perspectives. And one player said, oh, yeah, when they're on the ice, you got to be aware. You got to play it maybe a little differently. You know, you got to stay above the puck. You got to pay attention. You can't turn the puck over. I asked the other player, what, what's it like playing against the KHL line? Are you aware of them? I just play my game. I, Based on what I've said the last 10 minutes, you could probably guess one of the players that I'm talking about. Hmm. You have to pay attention when they're out there. When a guy like Lewandowski is out there, you just have to be aware of it. You have to play a little bit differently and maybe wait for him to get off before you start doing stuff. Maybe you catch him on a long shift and you can take advantage because good players sometimes extend their shift trying to chase offense. That's when you take advantage. But, you don't but, take advantage when he just hops on the ice. You have to have the shift discipline and shift experience to play against guys like that. You know, you know, because a lot of this comes back to what Matsko has been saying. Play the basics. It's not hard. Stick to the basics. Play the game. Play smart. You play don't need to be, don't don't need to be the hero. Don't need to hit home runs. If if, if you if you yeah, if you play if you play the basics, you play the team game, the hero comes to you. I don't know. I've just, it's time to put up or shut up with this team, Viggs, you know, because we're going to have a full roster this month. This is a big month. Uh, Michigan State, this is a big series. I think they need to go in there and get five or six points. That's that's what they need to do. Um, they need to, you know, when they step on somebody's neck one night, you know what? You got to come back and step on their neck again the next night. Or vice versa, you know, whatever we've had, you know, these we at first it was the bad Friday nights, great Saturday nights. Now it's been the opposite. <sighs> don't you don't you remember that series where Minnesota was playing Michigan State a few years ago? And I think it was at Mariucci, and I think it was around Halloween or something like that. And the Gophers had just dominated Michigan State for four periods. And I believe you were down in the team area between periods and you could hear the leaders from Michigan state saying, Hey, we're not leaving here without giving an effort. And I kind of, it was loud. It was loud. I kind of think the Minnesota players are like, man, what are you, what are we doing after the game? It's like, we are taking it to these guys. And what happened? Michigan flipped the Michigan state, flipped the switch, stole the Saturday game, got the split. 
and it's just a, a missed opportunity. If Minnesota wants to put themselves in a good position, these next three Big Ten series for them against Michigan State, uh, Notre Dame, and Michigan are crucial. If they mm-hmm. can, you know, get five points out of a couple of these weekends, they're going to be in good shape once everybody goes where they're going in February. If they keep splitting or, God forbid, you know, take like it's, one or zero points yeah. or something, they're, they're going to be in big, big trouble. They're done. Big weekend. What do you got? I'm saying five points. They win in overtime Saturday night. I know. You know I want to say sweep, Viggs. But uh, and unfortunately, it keeps coming back to prove it to me. And they still haven't proven it to us yet. Except for the Notre Dame series. Oh. They fooled us there. I thought. I thought they were. Yeah, we thought. Here we go. Buckle up. Buckle up. Are you picking a sweep? Are you picking a sweep? Picking a sweep, Jupe. I think the break, especially for Laffer, we hope so, has got to be cleansing. He is kind of a mental guy. He's, he's very intense, mm-hmm. you know, a, a thinker, you know, a guy who, who does a lot of stuff. I think getting him away from the exp- exhibitions, probably healthy for him. Because I think goaltending oftentimes is more mental than physical. And I think these players are anxious to play. I think a lot of them are realizing the chaos that could be coming. And Brock Faber looked at this weekend and he said, hey, you can't worry about what's next on the calendar. You got to worry about tonight. And I think he is going to be more vocal than he's been in the past. After wearing that letter for the world junior team, I think he's coming back going, all right, if we want to get to where we want to go, I got to step up and be more of a leader. And they need voices like that in the room to get them through a weekend like this. Six points. Wow. There you go. Viggs. I like it. I just, I, I can't get there yet. I know. I, I know. Just, would they, 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 they've, <laughs> they've pulled the rug out from under me way too many times this year, and they need to prove it to me. Five I, points isn't bad, though. It's not bad, obviously. No. Prove it to me. Get six points. Shut me up. Please. That's all we want. That's all we want. I could see Sparty being a little rusty this weekend, too. I, I'll help so. They can so. be rusty all they want. I don't think they look very good in the GLI, but we'll see. I don't remember. Did they? Well, they lost. They, 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 I think they split. Didn't they, they split. They got an OT win, but yeah. I, I didn't think they looked that great. So. All right, Viggs, you got anything else for us? Or are you just hopping for overtime? I'm, I'm, it's my birthday. I'm looking for an overtime beverage here. So ah. I've been. I had. I had a glass of wine with dinner. But I'm I'm looking forward to something. It, I was going to mention it, but I was going to wait until overtime for that. But yes, Viggs is 67 years old tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, that's me. That's how old I look. Oh my god, look at this gray hair. I look terrible on video. I got my eye thing going on. I look just great. Hopefully, just I haven't scared the people. Oh, what do you got? Don't there it is. Bourbon country, county, county. I sorry. I could, Okay, one contact is not in, so it's like all blurry yeah, with all one right. and clear with the other. So, well, if you don't have anything else, Viggs, you know we you, you, we picked you know you picked the sweep, I picked five points. That's uh, that's all we can hope for right now. We picked our Olympic players. Yeah, I. Uh... It sucks. It would, boy, wouldn't it be great to keep all those guys and. Maybe wish, it'll be good. Maybe it'll wish, force Moscow wish, to tinker. Wish, it, it will. You know, so it will force it. Could be good at the end. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the GPL podcast. We'll be back next week to recap the MSU series and preview the rescheduled series with Fairbanks as Viggs opens up his beverage. For those of you currently watching live, stay tuned for overtime. For the rest of you, we'll catch you next week on the GPL podcast. 